For those of you who have never worn a kimono, I think it's really interesting to see how a kimono is used to make pockets. And for those of you who wear kimono and you are interested in widening your horizon on kimono and pockets, this is the video for you. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Kimono and pockets was something that was on my list for planned content for a very long time and I never really had the opportunity to make this video. And then Janate from A Perfect Touch came in and she hosted a pocket swap where some fellow costumers on YouTube came together and we all made someone a pocket and we all received a pocket. Which means I also made a pocket and it was the very first not kimono related sewing product I have ever done and it was wildly confusing but I guess I had fun. <laughs> I made mine for Marlies and to give her at least a tiny bit of a 18th century pocket flair here's what I did. To give Marlies at least a tiny bit of Japan flair I'm using a kindan fabric that I have picked up in Kyoto that is also produced by the way in Kyoto. Kindan would be translated with brocade but that translation for me couldn't be more inaccurate because in Japanese you distinguish between different brocade weaves like is it a twill weave or is it a plain weave is the pattern produced with the warp or the weft yarn and so on. Kindan is called Kindan because Kin means gold and it uses gold yarn as a weft yarn and that produces the main elements of the pattern on it. It is very often used for obi, um, no theater costumes or even kobukusa in tea ceremony. And yes, in this video we will talk about tea ceremony a tiny bit because no one uses the pockets of a kimono better than Chajin. Kindan is also very sturdy so it is just perfect making a pocket out of it and I have chosen also a pattern that is a tiny bit Japanese chinua like. For the pattern for this because I had actually no idea what to do I found this pattern on the VNA homepage. I will link this down below. They also give a rough um, instruction of how to sew this together which is insanely easy so I'm hoping to finish this off in one day. I probably don't need a lining I'm still not sure if I should do a lining but I have this fabric prepared as a lining this is what I'm recently using for another big project you will see that project by the way and I'm also gonna use it as the bias binding you're gonna use on the edges. Okay, so let's get started cutting out. I marked out the pattern on the Kindan fabric for back and front and cut that out. And I did the same for the lining pieces. After I had pinned together the two front pieces and the two back pieces, I pinned together all four layers. What I'm doing here and also the finishing of the front slit is extreme kimono sewing techniques but I just couldn't wrap my head around how this should be done otherwise. I checked once again how much space would actually be inside the pocket and then I secured all four layers together by sewing it down by machine. And then I decided to sew on the bias tape by hand and of course blind stitching it because that's a proper kimono sewing manner. But does a kimono actually have pockets? The answer is yes and no because kimono pockets aren't really pockets in the conservative meaning. Nowadays you probably might spot kimono that have sewed in pockets somewhere and also kimono coats you wear over a kimono do have pockets but 
Both of them already underwent a huge influence by Western fashion. For example, kimono coats are a modern invention. And Howdy were actually the only real kimono coats they had in history. So having a pocket there actually always means it is influenced by Western fashion. When we look at the historical shape of kimono, they were all gender neutral, they had the same silhouette for men and women, and the sleeves were fully attached to the main piece of the kimono. And you might have guessed it, but yes, this big sleeve is actually the absolute perfect pocket and is also used as a pocket. It's, by the way, always my very favorite scene in every Japanese period drama when someone reaches into their sleeve to reach out for their wallet. <laughs> And since men's kimono are still very close to the shape of historical kimono, when you wear a men's kimono, you can use your whole sleeve as a pocket. For women's kimono, that unfortunately changed in the mid Edo period, when it became trend to wear a super wide OB and also higher up around the waist. So they had to take off the sleeves from the main piece and create the space for the obi so we can wear the kimono how it's worn today. Which means they created this open side here that is called footy. And yes, you can still use this as a pocket. I usually have ties and clips in here and you could also put your phone in here, but you would have to live with the fact that there is still this open side here and it could still fall out. And while I personally really envy people who wear men's kimono for the huge sleeve pockets, there is one pocket in women's kimono that men's kimono don't have. And that is exactly the obi. Especially when you wear an obi that you have to fold in half when you wrap it around your waist, you have still this open edge here on the side for everyone who wears kimono. That is why you always have the open side facing upwards because then you can use this as a pocket. And especially for flat things like your phone, this is absolutely genius. Unfortunately, nowadays there are less and less casual obi that are full size, you have to fold them down. Usually they're already sewed in half, so it's easier to put them on. And what you very often can find is a pocket now on your obi ita. So you can use that pocket like you would have used your obi as a pocket in history. Anyway, my favorite pocket for my phone is actually the color itself. It is perfect to store flood things in there. And this is very often used still in tea ceremonies. So you would put in there your kaishi, kobuksa and fuksa. Fukusa is a big piece of cloth. You could also say it's a handkerchief and that is used in tea ceremony to cleanse the tea ceremony items. A kobuksa is used when you want to look at very antique teacups or very expensive tea ceremony items. And kaishi are pieces of paper that are used in tea ceremony as a replacement for plates. Kaishi actually do originate in something that is called tatogami. Tatogami were also pieces of paper that were put into the chest since Heian period. And it was used as handkerchiefs, but also when you suddenly had the urge to write a poem. <laughs> so Heian period, right? Nowadays in Junichidoe dressing, Tatogami are actually prepared, but you don't really put it into the color anymore, but it was done every day in history. And because this is a kimono pocket that exists for such a long time, there is even an expression for it in Japanese, kaichusuru. And kaichusuru actually really means to put something and store something into your color. And very interesting is actually that the otaiko, the big obi musubi on the back, is also used as a pocket in tea ceremony. When you attend a tea ceremony, you have to bring your own kobuksa, your own kaishi. Kaishi, by the way, are also very often put in a tiny bag that is called kaishi ire. And you put that all together in a bag that is called skiabukuro. And when you arrive at the place where the tea ceremony is held, you will have to take out all of the items, 
put them into your collar and then you take the skiabukuro and the kaishi ire and put this into your otaiko to have it out of the way but easy reachable when you go home. And when you want to know what men do, I by the way have absolutely no idea because as a kimono teacher I went through the basics of tea ceremony so I can attend as a guest and I also have to learn some different names of the items and that was basically it. So I can go through a tea ceremony without making too many bad or rude mistakes but I definitely don't know a lot about it. And this is how far we have come with the pocket. I'm really happy how this looks. You can already tell that this is first of all not my field of expertise. I'm happy how it looks like but I'm not really sure if it's supposed to look like this. Also as you can tell as I did this lid opening here um, I just put on the lining and then I folded the lining back so you can a tiny bit see it on the front. I don't know if you actually can tell. This is super kimono sewing I know. I also put basting on it so it will stay like this. As you can also tell I'm not actually really trying to show how I made this pocket because this is not my field of expertise and as this is a collaboration with many costumers here on YouTube we have a whole playlist linked down below and I'm quite sure one of two of those people are actually really showing how to make their pockets and one of those ways is probably and hopefully what I have done. <laughs> so yeah, the only thing that is left here is to finish off the tie and sew this on and then we're done. Oh yes, and I am a European living in Japan, so the metric system is all I'm working with. Oh, I'm unfamiliar with the Japanese system to actually make kimono in the Japanese size, shaku. But inches are not really my thing, but Marlies told me her waist size in inch. And I'm very happy that IKEA has those measuring tapes here and they have centimeter on one side an inch on the other side. After I had cut out the length I needed, I sewed it onto the pocket by machine. And then I finished the unsewed bits by hand. And the pocket is finished. It's really cute, isn't it? I find it extremely cute. I have still the basting in. Wait, you can see the basting here, you can see the basting. I still have the basting in here um, because this fabric really takes some time to settle. I have already pressed it and let's just put it under something heavy and keep it there for a while. So this will settle a tiny bit because I'm of course taking the basting out before I'm gonna send this. And now let's venture out and get some Japanese goodies to fill in this bag because of course I am never gonna send a package without sending some nice Japanese sweets with this. It's here! <laughs> I received my packet from Amy. Thank you so much. I'm gonna link her channel down below as well as more leases. And I have opened up so um, we can easily have a look at this but I haven't pulled out the pocket yet. And I'm super excited. And ooh, I like what I see. She put some scissors in. Oh. Thank you! I just started a new hobby which is making obijime and I was in desperate need for some scissors for that so they're gonna go in that box 
that is not my sewing box oh my gosh i like the color already oh my gosh oh my god she embroidered it oh with sakura it's so pretty and it even has my name on it look at this it's oh my gosh and I guess it's a silk taffeta. It's the very first time I ever touched silk taffeta because never touched that. It's so... Oh my gosh! <laughs> Thank you! It's my favorite color. It's orange. It's orange and I think the weft yarn... Nope, not the weft yarn. The warp yarn is seems blue. I absolutely love this. And all those tiny clips on it. They are, I'm not using them so, too often, but I love these clips when I make obi, by the way. I'm gonna take them off. Super happy. Ah, oh, I told her that I wanted a something so I can put clips on it when dressing somebody. And she used the opportunity to actually put my name on it. And I actually love it. Oh, it's so many sweets. <laughs> I am German, so I love a good Vietas is definitely the best thing ever. There is some more in here. I can't reach them. What is going on here? But there is still some in there. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's my hubby found the secret pocket here on the side. I could figure it out. There is another pocket here on the side. Oh my gosh. I can bring like so much stuff with me. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm definitely the first person in history who wears a real tie-on pocket with their kimono, I think. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. M&M's! I have never found them in Japan, by the way. When you know where they sell M&M's in Japan, write it in the comments. Ah, oh, Hershey! <laughs> I have to be very honest, I'm not a too big a fan of those. But, you know, my niece will love it. Oh, I'm so happy. This is so perfect. I'm so happy with this pocket. Oh my gosh, so... I think now that I have my tie-on pocket, let's learn a tiny bit more about tie-on pockets for kimono. As you could see, women's kimono very utilize different openings of the kimono as pockets. But when we look at men's kimono, we find way more items that might be closer to something you could think of a tie-on pocket. One of those items is the so-called inro. Inro was a tiny box that was made of ceramic, or wood, or even metal, and it was used to bring medicine. The Inro was brought from China to Japan, and we also have records of the Inro being used about the 16th century. But it became super common in the Edo period. And Inro was not only convenient, it also was used to spice up a kimono outfit, especially in the Edo period. That's why you can find nowadays historical as well as modern inro that are heavily decorated with gold and silver, different colors, shells and more. And they are so cool. An inro is fixed onto the obi with a so-called netsuke. Netsuke is this a tiny little item that you can see on top of the rope, the inro is tied on. For men's kimono, netsuke are so cool and dandy. They can be super artistic and therefore also actually quite expensive. Another tie-on pocket that uses a netsuke to be fixed onto the obi is a so-called tabako ire. And as the name already reveals, this is a tiny bag yeah, I would rather say back than a pocket to bring your tobacco and your Japanese styled pipe. This is a set that consists of exactly that bag and a tiny longer bag you can put the pipe in. And those two are put into the obi with a 
Nitsuke. I think bringing your own tabako ire is extremely dandy and I've also seen blog posts that suggest to simply just bring a tiny notebook and instead of bringing a pipe with you, you could also just put pens into it. I extremely love that idea. Unfortunately for women's kimono style this wouldn't work at all because the obi is way too wide and way too high up on the waist for women and that is also why the word nitsuke for women's kimono is a completely different thing. It is basically just something decorative you put in your obi and let it hang there. Yes, I definitely have to start to wear men's kimono too because I so want an inro. Another pocket I have stumbled upon in my research for tie-on pockets for kimono is the so-called tamoto otoshi. It is two bags, rectangle bags, that are connected with a rope and you let this rope hang over your neck, over the nagajuban but under the kimono. And this then can still be accessed through the openings of your sleeves and you can put your phone and wallet in. I have also asked the company Edisho that is producing them as an original item if this could be worn with women's kimono too. And they said of course it's fine but you would have to live with the fact that sometimes the tamodo otoshi might peek out of your foodie. And unfortunately that's not really my aesthetic so I gave up on that and I probably will get one for my husband. But you know what? I now have a tie-on pocket that can be definitely used for kimono too and I am going to and as it's tweaked in a way so I can use also clips and ties on it so I can use it when I dress customers or students I am extremely pleased and happy with it and I think I will be fine with my kimono pockets plus a western tie-on pocket for a very long time. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this kimono pocket adventure. I had so much fun. Thank you so much to Jeanette again for hosting this pocket swap and if you like this video leave me a thumb up or tell me in the comments and when you're completely new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher feel free to subscribe and I would be super thrilled to have you here and I talk to you in my next kimono adventure. Bye!